thank you so much for joining the conversation. This is Nobody Cares. My name is Likuyani Eli, and we bring you this show every single Tuesday from 9.30 p.m. East African time. For the next half an hour, you and I are going to take a journey to discuss issues that surround us. And most of the time, we believe that people do care, but the truth is, at times, nobody does. So, I want to discuss with you something very important, the obvious road signs. If you're a driver, you know that driving as a skill is important. But what is even more important is getting to understand the road that you are driving on. And some of those things that help you understand and navigate the road include the road signs. What are these road signs? For example, you can be told, turn left. Some of them will appear in blue. Okay. It is not saying or trying to give you an alternative. It is actually demanding you turn left. And there are others that will be round bordered and, uh, you know, they will say no entry. That means that is a restricted area or the direction which you are approaching that road from, you're not supposed to be entering, a failure to which you might get yourself into trouble. So why then is it that some of us in life ignore the obvious road signs? Why is it as we try to navigate through life, we tend to ignore that which is supposed to help us be safe on the road? Some of these things to many of us are actually what we call the obvious road signs in relationships. Our relationships vary from both professional to private ones, where you get to interact with the people you hold dear, whereby you get to interact with your employees or your employer. Some of these interactions are supposed to be rich. They are supposed to be obvious because there are terms and conditions that you're supposed to adhere to as the probably the party involved in that relationship. But the thing is, most of the time, the person that is supposed to be giving out these instructions sometimes loses the grip. And what they imagine is, it is obvious. Have you ever been in a situation that you imagined it was obvious until you realize it wasn't? Something like, you know what? I love when you come home at 8 p.m. And this is always the norm. We know at 8 p.m. Ellie will be at home. At 9.30 p.m. Ellie must be doing a show on Tuesday. So these are obvious things. Then all of a sudden, the very obvious things don't happen. Okay. What do we do normally? we find excuses. And this is something we discussed in the previous episode, whereby I told us we shouldn't excuse bad manners. There are some programs we'll be running, including the perspective, and these are things that we talked about. So in this case, we are giving excuses as to why some signs have to be ignored. One of those excuses will be, ah, probably they got late on their way home. Okay, that's an obvious excuse. The other one would be, oh, they might have forgot I was waiting to be picked up on my way from work. So probably they are doing something else and they might have forgotten. The other excuse that are very obvious that most of us will make include, this is how they are. Uyu anakuanga heavy. Huh? Am I speaking to you? You are the per person that will say, uyu anakuanga heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the alcohol. So at the end of the day, we ignore the very, very obvious signs that things are not okay. If you've been looking at the social handles that we have, that is the arts in heart, you realize we put out uh, there a sign that uh supposed to show you a dead end. Okay. And if you're a driver, when you come across such a sign, it's supposed to tell you, yes, you still have some time, but before you get there, just know there's no way you can drive through. What happens with signs is they are given way in advance. Signs never appear after 
science comes before. Case in point, when we were discussing and everybody was like, ah, Nairobi kuna homa, kuna homa ingine mbaya kama una homa we ni illuminati. You heard those stories. What people didn't realize that most of them actually were suffering either from influenza or were infected with the Omicron variant of, uh, you know, COVID. We ignore the very obvious signs and give them excuses. What happens if you're told road ahead is closed and you continue driving? Most likely, you might be entering a danger zone. And if something happens, then it's obvious you'll start finding excuses to fault every other person but you. So what do we do then as human beings? We always find somebody to blame. The road sign. Let's see who is saying what in the comment section. Do we have any? I believe so. Uh, Noreen, I hope that is uh, sorted out. Those are assumptions. Exactly. We assume that everything is okay. We assume because they did this, probably this could be the reason. Notice one thing. If you have ever gone to a hospital and you feel unwell, definitely that's why you went in the first place, uh, the issue will be addressed in this way. Okay, since when have you been feeling A, B, C, D? The answer will be, um, I started feeling this way on this and that date. A good doctor can give diagnosis by mentions of symptoms. A great doctor will demand you undergo some tests. This is when you discussing matters, your wellness, okay? Now, when it comes to reality of life and how people associate with one another, what we look at are signs and actions. We look at signs and actions. You sign of something not working or working for you should be validated with the actions. However, sometimes it's very difficult to understand these two things because some people will give signs they are not okay, but act they are okay. Whereas some people will speak as though they are okay, but their actions will be a direct opposite of your expectation. Therefore, you are left wondering, when did I miss out on this? The road signs. The road signs when it comes to life and association as human beings it's very vital. We cannot ignore the sign and later on uh, try find excuses as to why something didn't go as probably should have gone. Have you been in such a situation and what did you do? I want us to take a break and when we come back, we continue with this conversation. Uh Hi, my name is JP, and you are watching Art in Heart. Please follow us on our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and share. May God bless you. And welcome back. Uh, in case this is your first time on Art in Heart, you can always go to our YouTube channel and our social media pages and get to subscribe so that every time we go live and we have new content for you, you get to be notified. Nobody cares tonight. We are discussing matters, the obvious signs, you know, signs that come and we ignore. I have a comment here by Noreen who says, I honestly hate working with assumptions. I hate working with assumptions. It is sad 
that the society is filled up with people of this kind. <laughs> Who is society is a question I'll ask you, Noreen. Society is you and I. And the people that create the assumptions are you and I. The people that create the room for us to assume actually you and I. I want us to work out this formula and find out then how do we get to be on the right side of life. The first important thing you want to realize is science never come after. Science come before. Science help you figure out what next. Science do not help you get a solution to the aftermath. Okay? Signs are actually trying to prepare you for the problem ahead. And it's important to pay attention to those things. Earlier on, I alluded to the fact of people who will change how they behave before. And then you will find good excuses for that. Realize a lot of us will give them as reasons. I call them excuses. It is okay to be late. But is it really okay for you to be late? It is okay to be late, but is it really okay for you to be late? Assuming you're on the and, and, and again today I'm gonna use the rod the rod as much to, to as much as possible to explain my analogy in all this. Assuming you are the red light, okay? And just before you cross the red light, the lights went red on your end. And because you are not on time, you decided to go through the red lights. A few things might happen. One of them being, you'd be very lucky to escape with no accident. The other will be, you might actually get ticketed for that. The other scenario, worst case scenario is, you will actually end up causing an accident. Because once you turn red, the other direction of the traffic turns green, meaning they are actually supposed to go through. But what happens when you ignore that sign? You get yourself and the rest of the road users in danger. Same, same situation applies in us and our relationships with people professionally and privately. We ignore the signs or decide to totally disregard them what happens we find ourselves in situations we might have avoided why it that we were on time to respect the sign that was there some of these signs include one turning overnight and they become a drunkard all of a sudden they are drinking themselves they are themselves stupid and you have no idea but you know what we will do as human beings so they are drinking, not realizing this person might be suffering something even more deeper than just alcohol abuse. Question is, what then do you do to help alleviate the issue? What do you do to address that issue? The sad reality of life is sometimes we need to weed out everything from the root. Sometimes we have to have an open surgery. An open surgery meaning you're going deep into the root. Most of the time, these might not be the solutions will be prescribed for when you are in hospital. Sometimes they'll say, let's take some medication here and there. You know, let's do some therapy, see how it works out for you. Let's this, let's that. But the reality when it comes to living life and living life to its fulfillment is you want to be in position to actually address the issue from the root. If the problem is lateness, find out why this person is late. The other day I was having a discussion with my daughter on why they are always late to wake up in the night, in the morning. And being a good parent, you know what you do? You do what is best for the children. If they tell you, Daddy, we need our tablets to study, what do you do? provide them uh, tablets. Mommy, I have my assignment, therefore I need my tablet to do ABCD. You do them. After all, nowadays our children are studying more online and they need to have those gadgets to actually continue with their studies. But the following morning, 
This little girl or boy is not able to wake up to be on time for school. Basically, what we will do, we'll find excuses to it. They didn't sleep well. And therefore, next time we'll tell them, go early to bed. <laughs> now, the thing here is they will actually go early to bed, but they will fool you they are sleeping. Meanwhile, they are actually on their tablets, chatting with their friends until the wee mornings, I mean the early mornings. And then when that happens, they are not able to wake up in the morning to go to school. The following day, we will give another prescription to the problem. I think it's because my children are too tired in the evening. So what I have to do is help them a lot with their housework so they are able to find time to rest. And therefore in the morning, they are able to go to work on time, rather to school on time. What happens? These little people go to bed and then they are again on their tablets. By the time you realize it was the tablet, probably you missed out on the obvious signs. Are you in a relationship that you see the obvious signs and you ignore them? Are you in a relationship that constantly takes and drains things from you, but you still find okay to justify them? I am speaking to you. You need to have a deep surgery. The deep surgery to, do, to identify, first you have identified the problem. Now it's rooted out. One of those rooting out includes, hey, people have been making this meme over and over and over. 2022, we are not, um, what is the word? You know, guys can help me in the comment section. 2022, we are not forcing things. <laughs> so we are not forcing things. As we stop forcing things, what are these things actually you're not forcing? Don't force to be in space with people that do not value your input. Don't force to be in space with people that do not value your input. I know people have said enough times, oh, you see, when respect is stopped being served, then you do not deserve to be on that table. Question is, how much respect do you serve in return? We can all go around and round and round and, and, and bicker about everything that is wrong about this life, about everything that your friends or your relatives or yourself have not done. I was having another conversation with a very good friend of mine and they told me most of the time, which, which, which sounded very, very smart and very profound is most of the time your nose, actually in real life, your nose is situated or located right above your mouth. How many times though did you get to tell you might be having a stinking mouth order? How many times? It took a distant nose to actually realize, dude, your breath is not fresh. Meaning, we might not actually see our mistakes. Most of the time we see other people's mistakes. How often do we get to see our own mistakes and our contribution to how things are working or not working? Lucy Kahoya, I'm a fry, sana hapa, anasema, moto fire, fire. Thank you so much, Lucy, for joining in. And yes, we are not forcing issues. Hey, Noreen, tonight you are helping me do this uh, broadcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining in. So as we try to figure out how well we can balance issues, how well we can balance our well-being, we have to step aside for a moment or take a back step and look at things with openness, with an open mind, and question, how often do I miss the obvious signs? So address the root cause. Let's not just get on top of it and give some, uh, here we call it dafalgon, which is actually painkiller, and then think that the pain will, will weed off. No, sometimes you need to amputate some things. And that tells you that in life, at times you must take very, very drastic measures 
if you want to put things back on track. Sometimes you might be forced to take uh, decisions that might not actually augur well with a lot of people around you simply because you are changing the way you are looking at life and the way you want people to look at you. Notice this, there's a difference between being very straight and appropriate with what you're doing and being absolutely arrogant or I will say disrespectful. Those two things are different. Question is, how do you differentiate them? See, it is orderly to come and tell you, for the past one year, you and I have had a great relationship. And I feel as we grow over and over, we have grown apart. And therefore, I feel this relationship is not serving our common interests. Probably I've overgrown, or probably this space does not fit me. And therefore, I will be moving on to find things that interest me more. And as I do that, I wish you the very best with everything you're doing. That is a very classic example of being respectful. Now, there's another classic example of being disrespectful, whereby everyone and everybody owes you everything, including things that you have created by yourself. You create a mess, but I owe you an apology. You create disorder, but I owe you order. You create tension, but I owe you calmness. You create tension, and I'm always the one who has to take over and make sure and reassure you that we are good. That is abusive and disrespectful. Make a difference between moving on with respect and moving out with no respect. As I conclude, I want to invite us to do one thing. Take a step back and reflect on those relationships we have. I am not asking any of you to do what we said, cut off completely. I'm asking us to evaluate the people we interact with, to evaluate the businesses we get into, to evaluate the people we invest the time that we have on. If these things do not meet mutual benefits, probably you've just been ignoring the signs. And it's time you read the sign before you became an experiment. Tomorrow night is a Wednesday and over Wednesday we'll be having a Thursday event with the one interesting young man. His name is Dan Najoli. And this gentleman will be having a discussion with me, a sit down. It's called The Perspective. And we bring you Dan Najoli. Very, very young man going and daring to go for that elective seat. What does it entail to be a member of uh, the county assembly? And what are his visions moving forward in this electioneering year? And these are some of the discussions we want to have here on Art in Heart. We want to look at leadership, responsibility, and integrity as a package. As we head the 2022 August elections, I want to call upon all of us that as we do that, let's embrace one another. Let us embrace tolerance, love, and cohesion. At the end of the day, the elections will be done, but Kenya and the rest of us are there for a long time. Until next Thursday, which is on the 20th, I hope to see you there. So stay tuned, log in, and good night. God bless you. Give them.